many podcasts has, has he done? Well, none, I suppose. He's listened to so a let's lot, let's take though. his advice. He made a very valid point. He uh, usually does. He does. He's a really smart guy. He asked that I turn myself down a little bit. I, you know what? I agree. He He's just buttering me up, man. You know, he emailed. He was like, don't put this on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's guaranteed. Guaranteed to go on. No, I'm probably not going to put it in the don't, podcast. Don't put this in the podcast, bro, but you're loud. <laughs> you're f- Two guys, one podcast. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. Tell okay. me that it doesn't sound a little delicious, maybe. I swear to you, I will walk out and leave your ass. You picture J.R. Ewing while you're having sex? I don't even know who he is. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. We are master of our own domain. We have a website, twoguysonepod.com. And boom, there we are. Did that today. Very proud of myself. I'm doing the proud dance in the studio. Yeah, I was. I mean, good job. All right, then. <clears throat> it's our 13th episode. Are you uh, Are you nervous? Are you su- superstitious? At all? Um... Yeah. You are yeah. superstitious? I mean, like, uh, I have some, I like to think of them as superstitions instead of obsessive compulsions. Like, I I set my timers, for instance, when I'm cooking to odd numbers. Like, uh, 17 is a number that I really, really use a lot. 21 is very important to me, too. I like to think of them as superstitions instead of OCD tendencies, but they're probably, it's probably just because I'm crazy. Part of a superstition is the... The, the story behind it it's not a, like i think whenever i think of superstitions i think common of commonly held superstitions i like give me an example. like if it's if it's if it's a superstition that is specific to you that's ocd it's not a superstition <laughs> well yeah it's, well okay well what about like uh, a guy that wears the same pair of underwear all through the playoffs or something that's yeah. a commonly held thing though but lots of people do that not shaving uh, a beard lots of people do that but the but the idea is that that particular pair of underwear has to be maintained. Not that underwear in general are magic, but like I won my first game, so now I got to continue the playoff run in these same draws. I think it comes down to that person's belief in it. Like I would wear the same underwear through a playoff run. It's not because I think that that pair of underwear is magical. I just want to keep as many things. <laughs> on me the same as possible i got you you just want to i i'm obviously at one with the universe right now and i don't want to upset that balance yeah like if i made it to a playoffs it'd be honest, i'd probably just free ball i'd go commando <laughs> yeah i'm gonna wear a cup in any organized sport really any, yeah i like any. my balls a lot i don't want anything to happen to them i want to wear a cup sometimes around the house of my kids like it's dangerous <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm talking about having a vasectomy, though, so I don't know what I'm wow. doing exactly. I mean, maybe I should just let it happen naturally if they get beat up that much. Would you Would you wear – so any organized sports? If I played church softball league, which is something I would never in a million years do. But let's say I did. I'd probably wear a cup. Yeah. If you right, and but, I, people, but people wear cups playing baseball. That, like, that's not a – I'm talking about would you, would you wear – a cup. If we started playing an organ, like a weekly game of pickup basketball, if you and I and five or six buddies started playing three on three basketball, yeah, I'd wear a cup. If we did it, like if you caught me on the spur of the moment, and said, "Hey, let's go play hoops," then I probably wouldn't have a cup on me, and right, I definitely those, wouldn't go buy one. But those are sports that, like, you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily wear a cup. If we went bowling in the four by four hundred relay of running or swimming, you wouldn't wear a cup. That's an organized sport. Definitely not swimming. Definitely not swimming. Yeah. There's very little chance of somebody else's foot coming in contact with my testicles in swimming. I don't so know you about really, relay. So you would, I don't, I've never run <laughs> in a, in a, a relay. long term. I mean, I don't know how I'll, – I'll say this. I got bumped into more than a couple of times the two times that I was involved in like a short term. Like I ran like a 5K and I ran a, a 10K once uh, when I was losing weight. When I first started losing weight, I ran in two organized races and – yeah, you got bumped into a lot. I don't think my balls got damaged, but I don't know. Do people wear cups when they run? Probably no. not, because chafing. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no. So you'd only wear a cup when normal people would wear a cup. 
You're just making it a bigger thing than what you think it is. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of guys that play basketball don't wear cups. Most, none of the professional athletes do. None of, none of the NBA players do. Because just they get racked all the time, and it's a huge fucking deal. Because they don't wear cups. I'm saying I'd be I'd be a pioneer. <laughs> I'd be a pioneer because I'd be a short, fat white guy playing basketball <laughs> too. <laughs> They would, they would expect you to be wearing a fucking cup. You probably got a back brace on, a flag jacket, <laughs> a mouthpiece, a set of goggles, and earplugs. I'm ready to play, coach. Put me in. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd be like, uh, like the uh, wrestling managers. Like I'd have, I'd have secret weapons hidden in my cup that I could yank out in the middle of the match. A special trick basketballs or something. Yeah, powder to throw in their <laughs> eyes. Ah! Old school wrestling move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so speaking yeah, of uh, sports. All right. So I was really disappointed uh, to find out that you don't, you really don't watch the Olympics. You don't care. I don't give a shit. I really don't. I mean, I, no, look, I'm glad that the Americans do well. I'm very proud of my country. I'm proud of my country, though, because we have freedoms and we have a booming economy. Even, yeah, when it's kind of shitty now. But it's better than most of the world, for God's sakes. Uh, most of our people are free to live their lives and do what they want to, and we have lots of opportunity here, and very few people starve in comparison to other parts of the world. I'm proud of us for all of that. I don't give a shit how fast we run compared to the Nigerians. Here's the thing. I, I love the Olympics. I mean, I sent you... I sent you a message that pretty much listed every other large sporting event, and the and Olympics are above it. You are a close. rabid sports fan. You're a much bigger sports fan than I am. I, now, you don't you you love baseball. Love baseball. You don't love any of the other sports, perhaps as much as I do. But sports in general, you are an ESPN aholic. You 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 mainline highlights and box scores, and you really enjoy all of that. But all of it pales in comparison, falls away. In the grandeur that is the Olympics, and in the particular, summer Olympics. the Summer Olympics. You, yes, the you Summer fuck Olympics. the Winter Olympics? Uh, you, like, you like skating, don't you? Uh, I, I do like speed skating. Apollo Ono, I, I'd like to hang out with that dude. I, just didn't, I didn't grow up around snow. I've never been skiing. It's something I have never you just done. just no frame of reference. I've been swimming. Yeah. I've I fenced for a while. You know a guy who has a kayak. Yeah. I, uh, I've ran. Right. I've thrown a discus. Yeah. I've wrestled. There's a lot of things in, in there that, that I'm familiar with and I can get behind. How can you not love something that that celebrates competitiveness, sportsmanship on such a large dude, it's the it's the fucking world out there and the world's watching. Yeah. We don't get to see it in real time. Like I got my uh I'm I'm a few years older than my wife. And uh, we've been watching it together, right? And I've I've been watching the Olympics since a, a, as as long as I can remember. I've been watching the Olympics, like in in '96, man. Yeah, I was thinking '96 has got to be the first time. I mean, a little bit in '92 with the Dream Team. I was into it '96 because it was in Atlanta, which means it was like everything happened. We saw it all live. Yeah. All the big events we saw live. I didn't. I had never been to Atlanta at that point, but it felt like a place that I knew. You know, it was in the South, for God's sake. So you know, it, it that that made sense to me. Um, so that had a special thing. Other than that, I haven't really cared. You're so un- you're you're that's completely un-American. I I don't I disagree. I here's it's not that I'm anti Olympics. I'm all for you getting excited about it. I like anything that gives any other human being joy that doesn't cost another human being pain. You know what I mean? Oh, oh no, hurt. the Olympics, bro. The Olympics. <laughs> causes pain i yeah. got a couple of things to talk about it's only three winners there's a whole lot of losers about the, about the pain no there's dude if you oh my god just you, you take the sports out of it right take the competition out of it and nbc does <laughs> yeah to, but to to have to know someone has spent well over the majority of their life years and years and years that they've given up they they've given up donuts. They've given like they've given up so much. They've given up relationships. They've y- y- all kinds of things that they have given up and put off the side to train and focus on this one thing. Not to be good at it, but to be the best at it. To to excel to the edge of human 
that's a that's a thing of beauty. We've talked about it. If you if somebody's weaving a basket and they're a fucking master basket weaver, I want to see it. Yeah. These dudes have been training for years. They've given up things. They've given up their families in some cases. I'm gonna cry thinking about this. <laughs> you are. You get a little misty. They're, they're giving up like all this stuff for this one for this one moment for this one this one thing this one ideal that they've put on a pedestal and to see it when these little fucks don't get it <laughs> other than the NFL preseason. You will never see a soul crushed. Like, oh. you will see a soul crushed during the Olympics. I've forgotten about your love for the preseason because, those, like, their livelihoods are on the line. Yeah. It's literally yes. whether or not they get to feed their kids this week or have to go back to work at Burger King in yes. some cases. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, some of these cats never learned another trade and won't because and, and now won't. their bodies are exactly. malformed in some fashion. That's, that's, that's it. To see. To see that it, it it's a thing to watch, man. That's drama. So a couple of notes that I have written down that that I found interesting, and most of these are going to come from the opening ceremonies. Okay, I know you didn't watch it. I I I watched it through the lens of Twitter, as I did the gymnastics last this, that night. That was something actually. else that blew my mind. You will watch stuff that's unwatchable because it is a quote unquote event. I have on the Twitter sphere. I have hung out. There's like, nothing bigger than the Olympics, bro. I just nothing. I a part of the thing is they've. I'm a cable cutter now, and they've made me jump through so many GD hoops. It's so damn hard to watch the Olympics, to watch any of it. It's not if it's you not, don't subscribe to cable. It's effectively it's, impossible. I'm not on the internet very often. I don't have a Facebook, so all these people are complaining about the delays. I don't know the results until I watch it during prime time. I don't. Tell you what, dude, my, my DVR is working overtime. Since the opening ceremonies, I'm I'm not shitting you. I've probably watched 18 to 20 hours of the Olympics. The yeah. opening ceremonies was only like two days ago. I mean, we're you no. Know, when did they open? Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So two days ago. It's Wednesday when we're recording this. For God's sakes, man. It's on TV all day. Uh, here's what's amazing. The first time you're you see these athletes is when they. They parade in, and it's each country, and they do it alphabetical order in the ridiculous outfits. And they, oh, some of them are. Um, it's like the Hunger Games. Hey, the, the here's the thing, man. Uh, the United States outfits were pimp. They were designed by Ralph Lauren and manufactured in China. I think that says who we are. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we're too lazy to make our own clothes. Here you go, China. Designed in Cupertino, <laughs> manufactured in China. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a huge honor. In case you didn't know, to carry your flag during that ceremony. I did know that. Yeah. It's like the it's like it's an honor to carry the torch. It's a big deal. They choose yeah. only a few people. Yeah, it's a big deal. So they go in and then it shows the person's name and it tells what support they're competing in. All right. So for example, Italy comes up. Do you want to guess what their flag holder was was competing in? Uh, uh, what's the? You're doing rowing. Yeah, not rowing, but what's the with the with the gondolas? Is there a thing for gondolas? No, but fencing, Poland? right? Fencing that's something you can associate sure. with Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's not a stretch. Inigo Montoya. Yeah, there you go. And then Ireland, for instance, heavy drinking, no boxing, boxing, exactly yeah. boxing. Like oh, Ireland boxing. I get it. Here's where I think it goes awry for some countries, and they maybe they're geniuses, maybe they're not. Kuwait, um, surfing, shooting. Cool, I'm not fucking kidding you. Like all the Wait. middle all the Middle Eastern countries. I'm not I'm not, the country, I'm not lying. the country who couldn't defend itself? Yeah, but all but all the Middle Eastern countries were just about all of them were sh- were shooting. The guy who cared, wasn't weird. shooting. That's weird. Because what else well, I mean, what have they grown up doing? That's a survival tactic to them. They've got to be good at it. I just I just found that amazing, which made, then made me think because it also shows the population of that country and how many Olympians they have. I'm going to use that to pick where I want to retire. Right, you're gonna you're gonna be an expat when you retire. Yeah, like I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, that's you're how gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna see the countries and flee here's, the, flee the states. Yeah, and here's how I'm gonna here's how I'm gonna decide which country I'm gonna go to. Whichever country has the best ratio versus population and Olympians is where I want to go because to have a high ratio of Olympians, that country's got to be pretty good to live in. So those people have leisure time to compete in these events. Uh, that's a very that's actually probably a great way to deduce. Like the uh, standard of living in a country. Yeah, I've so, never thought about it, but yeah. That's what I thought. Th- this is what I think about as I'm watching the opening ceremony. So, for example. Uh, can I guess? So, I mean, like Australia and Great Britain obviously are going to be very high. The U.S. 
very big. Well, high. but the U.S. has a huge population too. I'm talking yeah. about countries with smaller populations. I, I'm assuming yeah, have- Australia, U.S., uh, Australia and U.K. very very high. Yes. Uh, it'd be other European countries. Germany is going to be very high. Yep. Uh, you're looking at. All of like the Norways, uh, the, the the although maybe more in the Winter Olympics than in the Summer Olympics. I don't know. But outside of the U, still, outside so, of so the UK, population here is. Yeah. And I didn't go through all of them. I just right. jotted a couple of them down. Uh, but Palau is a it's an island country. Palau, okay. Yeah. Their population is twenty one thousand. All right. Wow. Yeah. Small, right? Twenty one thousand people. Yes. Like this, the, this town's bigger than that. Yes. That's, that's a whole. That's of, a sovereign that's nation. That's a country. That is a country. You and me, and some buddies, everything. could go over there and take, and just that take nation. it over. <laughs> they're, they're all at the Olympics right now. <laughs> Other guy, <laughs> all their best we athletes are gone. Fucking country. That's what are we doing it's here? Genius, genius. <laughs> <laughs> their flag's gone too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no flag, no country. I think the rules are clear. So Palau, twenty-one thousand. Right. Our future home people. Yes, our Palau, future home. Twenty-one thousand people. They, dude, they had four. Olympians. Olympians. Boy, that ratio has got to be off the charts. It's, it's higher than America's, I'm sure. So, so, for example, the Philippines, right? Okay. A hundred and four million is their population. Uh, significantly larger than Palau. Yes. <laughs> How many Olympians would you expect the Philippines to have? Based on Palau's ratio, yes. I'm going to assume they had 40,000 Olympians. One. <laughs> Guess who's not moving to the Philippines? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's not Neither going to the these Philippines. Guys. Neither of these guys are moving to the it Philippines. Is, it is obviously difficult. You are spending your entire time trying to survive. There's a lot of people over there worried about the light bill. <laughs> the island of Palau provides for you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something that I found interesting. I thought I thought that was an interesting way to, to view the world. It's, it's, it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> uh, USA, by the way, had 528 athletes. Wow. And this is the first time there have been more female athletes than male athletes. Uh, from the U.S. or from period? The, from the U.S. Okay. Uh, one of the stats I saw online I thought was very interesting, and, and you know, I'm proud about this because I'm an equality kind of guy. Uh, this is the first time in Olympian history or Olympic history that every competing nation has both male and female athletes. That's cool. That's I mean, that just goes, and how can you not, how can you not like it and feel great as an American and, and not feel that we as a country – through the venue of the Olympics has has been able to to display that. Well, I, there's you and I are both children of the '80s. Here's part of my problem with the Olympics: fuck the Russians. Y- yes, but not just fuck the Russians. In the '80s, in particular, there was this idea of our way was the right way, the only right way, and we didn't have to be assholes about it because eventually. If we just kept living it, everybody would see it. And I think that's kind of the idea that you're going for. And and yes, it, there is something to be said about, well, look what happens in a free society. People can explore all sorts of avenues, and, and humanity can achieve their utmost. Look at our Olympic athletes. But at the same time, I, I, as, as patriotic as I am, and I love my fucking <clears throat> country, but... I, there's a little too much jingoism in there for me. Just I can't, I can't, I can't get into it that much. I'm not gonna chant USA. Really? Nah. This country wouldn't be what it is if you didn't have those people chanting USA from way back. We we wouldn't have had a goddamn revolution if everybody thought like you. You're what's wrong with a nation. I don't. Hey, you, I'm a self starter here, man. You you and I were building a thing. We were just talking today about this what? is this is the American dream. This is my yeah. This is my example of 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 rah 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 USA. I'll chant USA on this podcast. Put a, USA, dude, dude. Put on USA. as much USA, dude. Put on as much lipstick as you want. You're still a commie fascist killjoy. I am not a commie fascist killjoy. That's rude. Yeah, and because you're American, you also have to be a freeloader. You're a freeloading commie a fascist freeloading. killjoy. <laughs> commie fascist killjoy. Yeah, because I'm sucking off the <laughs> the American teat without without pulling my own weight, huh? <laughs> uh. Okay, so All here right. we go. Back onto it. Yes. England hosts this this Olympics. Yes, uh, London. Uh, I would like to institute a new rule. If your country only wins one gold medal in the previous Olympics, you cannot host. Like you lose? Like You, you lose. It uh, doesn't matter what the bid was. The, yes. Who was second place? Yeah, they got, get to host the Olympics. I mean, I mean, think about it. This is a huge economic impact for these guys. If, if the medal count came into play here... Dude, 
we would see some crazy shit at the Olympics. But we, I mean, it's we'd the see same. a two minute mile, man. Do you think really, if you if we if it was like make it take it, if you won the Olympics, you got to host the next year. You're saying there'd be an arms race again for athletes. Yes. <laughs> it would be amazing. I'm all for it. <laughs> You want to see? Oh, there'd be so many Russians break out the super soldiers again. Oh yeah, like steroids would be fucking rampant. (laughs) It'd be awesome. Uh, Something else that I also liked um, is is watching. I've watched a lot of them, so I've seen a lot of names. Yeah, I I wrote down two of my favorite names. Okay, one plays for the U.S. uh, indoor volleyball team. All right, male, female, female. Okay, her name is Destiny Hooker. No joke, H O O K E R. Destiny Hooker. She's one of the illegitimate daughters of TJ, though. The- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man. sliding across hoods and whatnot. Like, but but here's the thing: is like, if your last name's Hooker, <laughs> you might as well go ahead yeah. and name yourself. Embrace Destiny. it. Embrace or it. Ginger, her, yeah, her sugar. parents did. Yeah, <laughs> precious, <laughs> nasty, <laughs> cheap. <laughs> <laughs> hello, 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 Pastor Robbins. This is my daughter, Cheap Hooker. <laughs> I've brought her for christening. That's that's crazy. <laughs> uh, Congregation uh, would like to welcome Cheap Hooker into our midst. <laughs> the uh, the other name uh, is a Chinese swimmer. All right, Mel. Uh, see, it's not fair making fun of the uh, the Chinese though. Oh, There's but it's a is, language barrier. This this makes it, this makes me um, it just makes me smile. They name restaurants like you know F U and things like that. It's it's but they just don't know. We don't know. It'll All bring right. a smile to your face. All right, what's the name? Parte Juan. <laughs> no joke. It's it's Park P A R K right T A E H W A N. It is pronounced. Parte one, table up on parte one, which is our party on, which is what you would expect if you're putting on a Chinese accent. That's how you would say party on our party one. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. That's party one, Garth. Uh, is he a good? Is he? Is he a good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He's good. He's he's pretty good, man. I saw Phelps got his nineteenth last night. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So he that's the record, yeah. right? He's the record. most decorated, and 15 of them are gold, so that's a plus. Yeah. Uh, something that's a big ticket at the Olympics is, is gymnastics. Right. Right? Like, there's. It's one of the highest rated always. Uh, yeah. It's especially big in the U.S. Yeah, but I, uh, my wife wasn't w- wasn't really into the Olympics back in the day, and so she, she didn't know who Carrie Strug was. She didn't know the, the situation on the on the bum ankle. She, she goes through it. She's got to nail this right. vault for the Americans. To win the, the all around and this this is the one with like the the Eastern European coach you can do it Bella, right? Bella, Bella Caroli his wife Marta Caroli is is the uh, coach now okay. uh, and Bella Caroli is also the one from Romania who you mean uh, Bella Lugosi I the, are they all named Bella, Bella Caroli it's that's <laughs> his name anyway he coached oh Nadia the, the girl who got the first perfect score for the Romanian team okay he was her coach too defected. I guess not defected, moved. He just moved. Yeah, he just moved. States. You know why? Because we got nice shit here. <laughs> yeah. He moved and started coaching the States, and we, we became powerhouse. And in 96, won. All around gold and the whole thing with – she, she stuck it, man. And as soon as she landed, you know, she looked to the crowd, looked to the judges, and then just – Fell apart. Crumpled. Because her fucking ankle was broken, right? Yeah, it exploded. Yeah. And I got teary-eyed explaining just that. Just telling her Just telling ex- – I did. I got teary-eyed. You're talking to a dude who cried at Batman, so it's, I shouldn't make I didn't fun cry, of you. I didn't cry at Batman. Batman doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of things, Batman Here, expires. Batman Strug's ankle matters. Yeah, Batman inspires no ones but looney ticks and, and geeks. This event. Batman lives in the heart of every man. So. Whatever. Whatever. But that's, like, I got, I got Weepy explaining it to her. Yeah. So we're watching the girls the other night. Yes. And these these chicks fucking just smoke everybody, right? They they yeah, rip like every dominate. other country apart. Dominated, not even close. But the qualifying to get up there, dude, Jordan Weber, Jordan Weber, maybe. Uh, she she's the world champion, man. She's the world champion. She proved it at that the world. She's she's the best all around gymnast in the in the world, man. Yes, she's already won this title. All right, but they have to qualify to compete for the all around. Okay, turns out. 
you can only take two Olympians from any any one country to compete for the all around. Okay. This girl has has lived, breathed, slept, dreamed oh of this moment. The all around gold. That's her goal. Has been since she was two. They go they go through it. All the Americans perform great. Right. She posts the fourth best qualifying score. Too bad two of her teammates posted higher scores. She was the fourth best qualifier and can't even compete for it. And when that score goes up and she realizes that, and you see her you see that realization take her, man, and that's that's a moment that is out there for the world to see. Imagine your most heartbreaking moment being televised to billions. Like the moment on which your universe turns, the moment yes. at which you you stand at the crossroads of of success, ultimate success and final completion of your life's journey yeah. or ultimate failure and and the vanquishment of that that dream and the world sees it and everybody got to see it except for one guy. And you're a 17 year old girl, man. Oh Christ! And and we saw it. We dude, you see her. I mean, there's nothing more heart wrenching to see than that. And here's what these cocksuckers do on TV, dude. It it pissed me off. It gave me a case of the red ass. I couldn't believe. I'm 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 getting upset and gonna cry because of this. The girl who did make it, they interview they interview her, and oh, how does it feel? You made you made the all around. With Jordan behind her, like five feet, w- openly weeping. Uh, they had her in the shot? Yes, during the whole goddamn interview. Now, on the flip side, though, somebody on the fucking team has to be aware of where the camera is, though. Olympians in this day and age, uh, d- d- one of the coaches or something, if not one of her teammates, somebody's got to get her out of that shot. No, she tried to walk. She As they're, as they're leaving the oh, floor. Oh, they're fucking. As they're, as they're leaving the floor. She tried. The team takes a left, and she goes straight and tries to go into this dark hallway. This this to this be walkway. alone to have a moment. They fucking block it off and herd her back down the other lane oh, to stand there. Yes. and deal with it. Yes. Oh, that's not cool. See, on the flip side, on the flip side, as much as that's heartbreaking to me, watching the Russians crumble during the last two apparatus and see them visibly shaking and crying. Those tears of despair were delicious. Yeah, there's nothing ever feels better than beating the Ruskies. That's just that's just <laughs> that's just ingrained in us, man. Children of the '80s, man. That's that's not gonna stop. Uh, speaking of children of the '80s, are we done? I, you know what? You, you've warmed the cockles of my heart a little bit. I'm gonna try. I'll spend some. You know what? Maybe tonight. I got fuck all to do. You and me, we'll hang out. We'll watch a little. Olympics. I love. I love it. I love. There the you go. All right, we'll watch a little. I'll watch some games tonight. I'll cheer with you. I might even chant USA if something good happens. All right. Speaking of children, it was the, of the, it was the communist fascist comment, wasn't it? <clears throat> uh, maybe you put me. You know, I got to defend my turf. We we have a we have a dear other guy. All right, it's from a lovely young lady. Can we put in some nice uh, nice by the fire music? Give you some little some fireside yeah. chat music or something. I I thought about maybe even doing these like Casey Kasem's long distance dedications or something. Uh, <laughs> Dear Casey, <laughs> I met my girlfriend six years ago. Yeah, but no, I don't think that's right for it. I dear other guy. Uh, this is from a lady in. Um, uh, well, it's from Sweet and Southern in L.A. I walked you to a in shopping the wrong center. Wrong place. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, that's a good point. Dear other guy, I walked to a shopping center today on my lunch break. A hobo stopped me and says, "I'm a fan of Married with Children, the TV show. Can you spare me a couple of bucks? Back to the future. Back to the future." <laughs> <laughs> I gave him the money. All right. What would you have done? <laughs> um, I. So here's the deal. What's he gonna do with with that cash? I maybe buy a burger, maybe buy a cheeseburger at McDonald's. That's best case scenario, right? Right. He's going to take you two dollars and go buy a small order of fries and a and a and a cheeseburger. Well, Worst case scenario is he's going to put it together with some other two dollars later on in the day and buy an eight ball of Coke or or a, or a you know fill his crack pipe. Right. So here's the deal. She was walking to work. She's obviously going to walk back to work. This was her lunch break. Yes. Um. So sweet and southern in L.A. Uh, I came up with that. Okay. That's a horrible job. Why? Because L.A. For- could also be Louisiana. So why be redundant? 
I mean, if you're in Louisiana, you're obviously Southern. Why couldn't you just call her Sweet? Nobody says, nobody uses LA as an abbreviation out loud for Louisiana, though. What? Nobody says, where do you live? LA. And they mean New Orleans. I, all right. Do you really? You've I, used it in conversation. You've used the abbreviation. I've used it as a postal code, you know? Yeah, I'm from the LA. Yeah, no, okay. But that's not conversation. Okay. It's trying to play off the connection to Los Angeles. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, you ask for Dear Abby type surnames, and so that's cheap. And so it's. So why not go with Sweet and Southern in the City of Angels? All right, then that's a better one. There you go. Sweet and Southern. This this letter from Sweet and Southern in the City of Angels. There you go. All right, All right. we've we've got her name figured out. Next. <laughs> okay, so so here's go back to back to the subject at hand. Okay, okay, Sweet and Southern. If you're going, if if you're going to a shopping yes. center and you're going to be walking back the other and day, she's going to get work, lunch. Right, you're going to get lunch, uh, and and the guy wants money, and you're giving it to him, and your thought is you're giving it to him for food. Why not just bring him back something and give that to him? I think I think really her issue was the confrontation. What? Why was his interest in Married with Children, the television show, pertinent information? And what were the exclamation points? Back to the future. Back to the future. You're looking at this all wrong. The real question is, why is he homeless? <laughs> Probably because he loves the TV show Married with Children and Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Probably led him to being homeless. <laughs> you saying he might have like chased up Doc Brown's theory no, listen, on building a? Yeah, dude. Listen, I'm all, I'm all for doing good. You're a, you're a do gooder. Yeah, but I'm. I, you're saying there's a wiser way to help the hobo. Right. Bring him a burger. Because don't give him the bucks. Yeah, because did you it, giving him cash? It, you're probably you're probably keeping him in the position that he's in. So you know what, sweet and southern, good job on holding a man down. You piece of shit. Way to way to help a brother out. I don't know why I said brother. The guy couldn't be could be white and homeless. He, I, well, I just assumed L.A. He's a human brother. Yeah. Uh, we also got a little listener mail. Jamail, Jamail is here. Ooh. Um, our mutual friend and uh, Cronkite chimed in with celeb confidants. Ooh. Uh, oh, can I guess? Hold on, I want to guess for our mutual friend. Okay. He did just like us and gave us a top three. Okay. I am going to say Stanley Kubrick is one of them. No. I don't. Nick, I don't. I'm <laughs> way done. off. You were way off. I'm done. Samsonite. Uh, <laughs> uh, number three is Bill Belichick of the New England Patriots. Really? Of I, I, that'd be a fascinating one. To know what that dude was really like when you let down the Iron Curtain, it'd be like knowing Dr. Doom without the mask, man. Oh, it'd be awesome. Bill Belichick, number three. Bruce Lee is number two. You must be like water. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, a really that's good, a good one. one. Yeah, all right. On several levels. Like, first off, he was fucking famous, cool as hell, but also like with the peaceful warrior's mind and everything, so he'd get the Dalai Lama effect or, or Gandhi effect that you and I were going for. Number one, and this is a badass one, the father of our motherfucking country, George Washington, man. The tallest man in the room. Uh <clears throat> I'm go- uh, I you really? You're gonna throw away on on the old cherry yeah, I'm splitter? Gonna, I would cherry splitter. Is that he's? I don't know. The cherry tree chopper. Did he have a? Isn't that isn't that Lincoln? He's the I can't rail tell splitter. A lie. <laughs> no, Lincoln was the no. Yeah, Lincoln was the rail splitter. He no. George Washington chopped down the cherry tree. I mean, he didn't. But he. That's the one that I don't the think this might be. A, this might be a mistake. I'm not gonna say either way. I'm gonna let you live and die on it your own. All right, all right. But I'm I'm saying I'm staking my claim on George Washington is the one that, that chopped down the cherry tree. Supposedly, that allegedly, that legendarily chopped down the cherry tree. Okay, yeah. you could be right, but you could be wrong. But uh, you could be right. But you're probably I may wrong. Be right. <laughs> I may be crazy. Um, uh, yeah, I'm. I'll keep Bruce Lee. I'll toss the other two away. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Bill Belichick could keep you in hoodies though, or or sleeves, Sle- <laughs> but only sleeves. <laughs> I got a, I got all these sleeves. Well, so I, I got. <laughs> he's keeping them because if he ever gets if he ever gets put in jail for any of the things he's doing, he's he can make a rope. Make a- <laughs> <laughs> That's he's storing them for ropage. Oh fuck. Um, he keeps them at his mit- mistress's house so he can climb out the window if yes, need be. Yes, exactly. All right, Cronkite. Cronkite checked in. Uh, he says um, Keith Richards. No, oh, that's a real good one. He goes. That's on, a real, real good one. Even though 
He probably only remembers half of his stories. You know the remaining ones are fantastic. On the other hand, I would never, ever take his advice on anything. What he really? Think it, dude, this dude went through all that bullshit and has survived. He's got to know a secret. No, no. What I'm saying is, I'm the, like, he, he, he's not gonna, he's not gonna tell you not to do something. Like, if you're like, how's Coke, Keith? And he's like, oh, Coke's wonderful. Look, look, he's extremely successful and long lived. There might be something to this. Maybe so. Maybe so. I, I say he's, uh, he's fucking embalmed himself. Yeah, I think like, it's a, Keith, Keith Richards out. is a good one. It's, it's right along the line of uh, Frank Sinatra. Yeah, kind of it's the same a thing. similar to a, it's yeah. just a different era. It's yeah. the Frank Sinatra for a different era. Our mutual friend also chimed in with. Uh, shoulder Angel and Shoulder Demon from a while back. Oh, just not getting around to it, huh? Yeah, Buckminster Fuller for his Shoulder Angel. All right. And Napoleon Bonaparte for his Shoulder Demon. I really like that one. I couldn't deal with the accent. <laughs> like, I would almost always do good just to shut him up. You're just like the opposite of, of a And dude, you're taking, a, you're taking a small man and making him smaller. He's going to be even more pissed. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He will, he will take over. He will take over your soul if you let him. Napoleon, this girl's had a few too many drinks and she wants me to sleep with her. What should I do? He'd be like, take over France. <laughs> no, no. He would be, take over her friends. <laughs> Run a train. <laughs> um, I, I thought. Uh, Fig Newton. <laughs> Fig Newton. You, you brought some show and tell today? Yeah, I'm, there's no bones about it. I'm a lucky guy. Yeah, I just I just am. You've you've won a a, a local lottery twice in two years. Well, and things tend to go my way, man. Just the general do. trajectory of your life is one of, of falling in shit and coming up smelling like roses. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm particularly good at many things, but I'm lucky. I, I think you were probably like a Christian martyr in a past life, or uh, you know, Ooh, like could, a Buddhist I, monk. I wanna I wanna pick. A martyr. Yeah, you want to go back and f- find the one. You, you should discuss with our mutual friend's wife, like the list of saints that you oh, yeah, might she knows them fit, all. fit most. Uh, so you are uh, you're scratching a, a lottery ticket here. Yep. We may be breaking some <laughs> lottery rules. I don't I, know. Hey, I'm old enough to I'm old enough to gamble, baby. Let's see how lucky you are. Match your number to any of the winning numbers when prize shown for that number seems simple enough. All right. Ooh, if there's a stack of money symbol, I win double that prize. See, I always like the kicker. And the if kicker I just, is very and important. if I just get a money bag, which is trademarked by the way, I, I can't believe they put they could put a money bag on here. The money bag is trademarked by um, Gene Simmons. Really? Yeah. Like an image of a money bag with a with a dollar sign on the bag. By like of Kiss, Gene Simmons. Yeah. Why? He's a businessman. <laughs> Who saw a good image and <laughs> yeah. thought somebody should slap some legal leaves on that? I like, I like money. That. I'm taking this. All right. This is going to be a fun exercise. No. Nope. Nope. This kind of sucks. Uh, that you're losing. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. There's like one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you're saying there's the 15, game sucks. There's well, there's 15 numbers you can scratch off. Right. I mean, you can only win once, but you're losing 14 times. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You don't. I assumed you had to match multiple ones to no, win. No, just one. I just got to match one number. I mean, I have multiple numbers I can match. I have one, two, three, four. I have five numbers. It's like a bingo style game. Yeah, like you, you like I have 25, 16, 15, 10, 33. I got gotcha. you. If I hit any of those numbers, I win. You're good. There's 15 places to scratch, which means there's 15 ways to lose. Lots of options. I don't like losing. <laughs> it's it's something you don't do very often. Man. I can't even get a free ticket? Come on, man. <laughs> Nothing. Turns out you're just a regular guy after all. Just a regular guy. Just a regular guy, man. Man, that does suck. That's what it feels like for the rest of us. No. Ah, now see, you still haven't seen The Dark Knight, have you? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah. It's one of my favorite lines of the whole movie. He's standing there with Catwoman on the roof. Catwoman disappears into the night just as he turns around and oh, goes... Oh, that's what that feels like. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Or, that's what that feels like. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the one thing. And uh, uh, somebody, 
Maybe uh, Kevin Smith mentioned it. I heard somebody mention, I think, on Twitter. They were like, why does he say that line still in character? There's no one else on the roof, and he still talks like Batman. <laughs> it comes with a suit. <laughs> Once you, if you're in that suit, dude, you gotta be. He's, you he's, gotta be Batman all the time, or you're gonna give yourself away. Saying Bruce Wayne's method. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, dude. He's definitely a method actor. He's a, he's an outside in kind of guy. <laughs> Look at you, man, dropping knowledge on me about the bat. And I you, think I think I, I didn't care for the movie. Oh, that's a fucking shame. All right. <laughs> we're kind of we're kind of winding down on time here. How about we do a quick Who are these guys? All right. Who was the first celeb? that you realized was attractive like your first celebrity crush who was the who was the woman that all who, who that said made your balls woman. drop <laughs> well, yeah okay, okay fair enough but i mean somebody flipped the switch for young other guy um man <sighs> this is tough you want you want me to tell you mine and, yeah. and and grease the pump here a little bit um pun uh, intended yeah pun intended kathy ireland man she did it for me she first of all she was super safe Always a good girl, right? Even when she was naked in Sports Illustrated or effectively naked. Uh, I had uh, uh, this, and I, I was like seven. I had a Kathy Ireland poster in my bedroom. She was in a blue bathing suit, and she had signed the bottom. Or, you know, they stamped her signature on the bottom, of course, because I bought it at Walmart. <laughs> I would like to see the seven-year-old standing in line for that signature. Well, but that's the thing. To me, in my head, when I bought it, and that's I bought it at, at Walmart, I thought, oh, well, these are all signed. Did you, did you, did you, put, room. Did, did you put two one guy two with one love? Guy love? No, <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't go so far as that. But I think it did say like kisses XX Kathy or something like that. Yeah. You know, she was just amazing. And I would I would read interviews. I'd try to like I'd I'd watch TV the, when she was on like Jay Leno or something. Whenever when Sports Illustrated had come out, she'd generally be the one at the time. She was in every issue for the swimsuit uh, issue, and so she'd always do the talk show rounds then. But fucking Kathy Ireland did it for me. And she was the first like I had always thought girls were pretty, but but she was the first one that I was like, oh, fuzzy feelings in my tummy. All right. Um Grace Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I kid, Aggressive I joke. sexuality. I kid. I kid. Yeah. Now we know it's fucked up with me. Yeah. Was, was she was she an octopusy? Which one is she in? Uh I, I was I was thinking about uh, oh, Red Sonia? Or well, not just Red Sonia, but uh, Conan? any of the Conans, yeah. 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 That's Is she the in great, all that's of them? The great... I don't know. Maybe she's only in Conan. I know she's in one, uh, at, yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah. I think she had to be one. Yeah. Like Contractually, when they created the Conan franchise, they were like, and someday, when you make a film, you must include Grace Jones. <laughs> yeah. I love her. I love her. Now, um, I think probably Phoebe Cates, man. Phoebe Cates. I, I can't Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, okay. Was that the one that did it? The, she she comes out of the pool. Yeah, right? in the red bathing suit. Yeah, God. Yeah, that is a good shot. I didn't even... That movie didn't... Like, I didn't see it when I was a kid. Yeah. But that image of her coming out of the pool was used a lot. And even though I didn't get the... Like, I didn't get the context exactly... I knew what the fuck it was. It was yeah, I mean, her hair's all slicked back. Oh yeah, and she's and the water's dripping and glistening, yeah. and the lights perfect, I, uh, and uh, she's a, a perfect physical specimen. Yeah, Phoebe Kate. I mean, still, man. I um, that's a good one. I you, probably you and a whole generation. Uh, although it's not like Kathy Ireland's an original uh, uh, young fantasy. Yeah, and then like um, I'm trying to think. I mean, this is going to sound creepy, but I'm trying to think of like. Whenever I was a child, Who you whenever I was a kid, to? <laughs> no, no, no. I was just, I was trying to think. I, can't, I can't think of anybody. Uh, no, but I was trying to think of what other, because you see kids on TV and you're like, oh, is she my age? She's kind of. Oh cute. yes, yes. I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of one, like that, and I think it's Alyssa Milano. Uh, you and I talked about Alyssa Milano. Yes, yeah, she would, but she was all, she was several years older than us, five or six years older. Which, when you're eight, nine, ten, is a lot. Five or six years is a whole. It's a world of difference. She was a grown up compared yeah. to us. Um, I, to me, the two that were around my age that I found attractive as celebrities were uh, Topanga, of course, from Boy Meets World. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, she flipped all my switches. Weird looking, man. A little, a little younger She's than weird, us. Weird. Looking. You've said this before, and you're you're crazy for it. She looks, like, she looks like a carp. She's still fucking hot. I disagree completely on that. Uh, you're you were way off base, pal. Uh, the the other one though, Kirsten Dunst in Interview with a Vampire. 
Like, of course, they sexualize her a little bit in that movie because that's the nature of the character in the stories. Yeah. And it's weird as an adult watching it because she's a little girl. But when the movie came out, she was she's our age. So it was it was appropriate for me to think she was sexy in that movie. You know what I mean? And that was kind of – I was into the books too. So the fact that uh, – like How, old was, attractive she in that, how actress, old was she in that movie? She's like 12 when she made that movie. Uh, the character is supposed to be like six years old, but they made her in the film. Oh, okay. They called her 10, I think, when they caught her, and she was actually 12 or 13 when she played it. Yeah. It's like um, Natalie Portman in The Professional. Like they play her as if she's like 10 or 11. She's really – 12 or 13, 14, something like that. Yeah. That was about the same time. Those two, Natalie Portman's another one. She's either our age or a year younger. And and again, that's a, a, a peer that I found attractive as a celebrity. And if if no, if, if you're listening you don't know who Phoebe Kate is, uh, Google her. Do yourself a favor. Yeah, well, I'll have links to all our hot chicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's another thing that I should mention, by the way. You... Okay, so we mentioned at the top of the show, you can find us at twoguysonepod.com now. Make it makes it super easy. You can subscribe to us in iTunes, of course, and review us if you'd like. Um, go by our Facebook page, too, though. Facebook.com slash twoguysonepod. I posted, I haven't even told you about this. I've gone through and posted posters, movie posters, for all of the movies that we discuss with a link yeah. to what episode that we discussed them in. Same thing with books, too. I've gone back and listed some of the books that we've discussed with a link to the episode and, like, the title of the book and the author. So if you're interested in, if you want some movie examples or if you want some uh, uh, book uh, ideas, if you're looking for something to read, and now if you want to know about some hot chicks from our childhood, there'll be pictures on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two guys, one pod. There you go. I'll be sure to visit. <laughs> no, you won't. No. <laughs> you know, you you can't get on the Facebook. It'll, you know what it'll do? You could go to our page, and there'd be a big banner at the top that say, Two Guys, One Pod is using Facebook. Don't you want to use Facebook? Please log in here. Sign up for a new account. It's free. Blah, 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 blah. Nope. <laughs> yeah, not so much for the other guy. Um, you can email the other guy, by the way, just like our uh, friend... Uh, sweet and southern in the city of angels. Yeah, that's a good one. Even better, it's good. It feels good saying it. Rolls off it. the tongue. It's a little too long for me. I think that's all of a sudden she becomes she of the many names. <laughs> if you want to email us though, two guys one pod at me dot com. Two guys one pod at me dot com. T W O. Yeah, all spelled out. S P O D. That's right. All spelled out. No numbers in our titles, and that's across the board. That's on Twitter. That's on Facebook. That's our website. All of it. Two guys, one pod, all spelled out. Um, I think that's another show. Look at that. Our 13th episode. Nothing broke. We didn't have any black cats walk in here. Dude, it hasn't been published yet. Oh, you're saying like our website's going to crash by Sunday? Yeah, way to, way to jinx yourself, a-hole. Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. I, the universe loves us, sir. We're putting positivity out there and we're getting it back. Well, at least one of us is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go watch the Olympics tonight. No, you're not. I'll put positivity out there. Okay. Anyway. You may, I had a train of thought and completely forgot it. Oh, did I derail you? I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll do this again next week. You can talk about it then. <laughs> you're like you're like a penny on the rails to my way of awesome town. <laughs> I just killed 150 people <laughs> on the Amtrak of your mind. Yep. <laughs> I'm a I'm a mind terrorist. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. <laughs> I've been taking down deep in my pockets I can't find that golden ticket And everybody says I need to smile Well happiness don't grow on a tree Nobody wants me to be me And I just need, need a little while worry about what they think You try to please but you can't We're all so tired and hopeless the Truth is I keep coming up with A day late A dollar short Please ignore My opinion in this case Your time is not something to waste but if you're 
listening from afar Everybody's so hypocritical In everything that they stand for Why can't we be who we really are? You worry about what they think You try to please but you can't We're all so tired and hopeless Truth is I keep coming up with Stay late, a dollar short. Please ignore everything that they say. They don't really mean it anyway. They're just a little self-conscious. Now I believe that you be you. Today's lesson, it's through. Now go home. Don't be nervous Don't you worry about what they think Try to please, but don't you change All you do is look them in the eyes and say A day early, a dollar more Please don't ignore my philosophy 